are these people? Inequality.org. And there's they have an, a writer there by the name of Sam Pizzagatti. We've definitely covered an article of his or two on the show before. He wrote something about private equity entering the NFL. We don't normally cover this kind of stuff, but I thought it was interesting and worth bringing to a quick hit that the billionaires who run the world's most phenomenally profitable sport have just decided to share the wealth with the greediest of their fellow rich by a 31 to 1 margin. And we're going to talk about who the 30, who the one is. The owners of the 32 pro football franchises that make up the NFL have just voted to crack open their money-making machine to the investment fund kingpins of private equity. These fucking parasites get everywhere. You greedy dirtbag! The NFL isn't exactly welcoming in private equity with, with, with totally open arms. Only some NFL pre-approved private equity firms will even be initially able to buy up stakes in NFL franchises. And they're going to limit and allow no single private equity stake to amount to over 10% of a franchise's total value. So part of the reason for this and uh, is because the values of the franchises are becoming so high that the families that own them don't want to hold all of the liability and want, as the thing grows, they need the marketing support and the alignment with these private equity firms. And you're going to see private equity industry has over time been generating plenty of windfalls like these for decades. Now they've been buying up firms, charging them enormous fees and stripping them of their assets. Like they did with Toys R Us and Sears and so many. Right. They, now what they, what he talks about in this article, two things was um, one Bolero, oh. which is now like the largest bowling center um, in the country, right? Yeah. Um, and how Bolero, let me go back here. Bolero, um, now there are 350 other nationwide. They're starting to raise their prices and they're putting all the local guys out and they're becoming the only game in town. And the the one, by the way, is the Green Bay Packers, which is a publicly owned, not-for-profit, not-for-profit company, publicly traded. The old cheesy boys. And no one person can own more than a than a couple of thousand shares out of this massive hundred fifty four thousand share pool to keep it truly right. public. And then what happened was after they did that in the sixties, the NFL actually passed a law that no no franchise could ever do that again. Okay, it's like. It, communism in a way, you know, like everybody has a stake, everybody owns it, everybody has a say. And they right. NFL shut that down. Now, have the pay Packers made any less money than all the other franchises because of that? No, it's perfectly would have been acceptable. Plus, the people who live in the city could have state more actual stake. Um, so yeah, the Bolero thing was interesting, and that the one vote against the private equity was the the Packers uh, because they were publicly traded and publicly owned, and the people had a say. All the other ones were, right. you know, billionaire owners. And the uh, the Cowboys now I saw is worth somewhere close to $10 billion. Right. Um, yeah, here, Roger Meadows saying Steelers and Packers are cooperatively owned by their fans. Will that change? I don't know. I thought that, that, the, Steel that the, the, the Packers, uh, the Steelers were owned by uh, a family, I thought. Maybe not. That's uh that's about what I hey how about that that, that wrapped up pretty nicely but support independent media like I said support INN support the Zago brothers independent art as well they are independent we're independent it just kind of works you know independence helping each other and and this is nobody else is going to do this for us they got billions we got us and we got yep. you so thank <clears throat> you really I love you all. Thank you.